Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Sprinklebeard, and today we are going to be talking about Rage Regen as a stat. We are going to do scrutinize the stat, and we are talking about Rage. So, I'm going to be re-equipping some champions as I'm talking about this, so kind of ignore what I'm doing, or if I seem to get unfocused, it is probably me thinking to myself, crap, what champion am I gearing up with what gear? Oh, who has what gear? Because I just spent about uh, an hour and a half unequipping champions, moving gear around to test out some very fascinating information, to say the least. Uh, so let's talk about Rage Regen, right? Uh, what is it? What, why do we care about this uh, Rage Regen auto and then the Rage Regen percent? And... In my testing, I was able to figure out something that it, it's not what I thought it was. So, your Rage Regen Auto, right? I guess here, let, let's start off with the basics, right? What is Rage? Rage is our mechanic in this game that says, this is when you are getting to your ultimate. So, in the case of Comet here, I need a total of 1,200 Rage before I can cast his ultimate. When I first summon Comet, he will start off with 600 Rage. Ergo, he needs 600 total to get to his ultimate. Then, after casting his ultimate, at the end of his ultimate, he starts back off from zero and has to rebuild back up to 1,200. Now, looking at his gear, here we have Rage Regen percent, and then we have a Flat Rage Regen, right? This Flat Rage Regen, this 14, it is... I should have done the math before I started this video, but... I, I guess we need to do the math real, real fast. Hold on. Hold on. So, uh, equals 1,200 divided by 14. 85. That seems about right. So, that seems to be about 14 rage per second, if I had to guess. And the reason I say that makes sense is that my comet was ulting around... Uh, 60 seconds. It was about like 62 seconds. What was my number recorded? I'm going to be showing you guys these numbers in a moment. Um, I don't have everything filled out because as I was testing, I was getting more and more like confused and concerned. And then I was able to like really zero in on what I wanted. And now I'm just kind of like, oh, all right. Well, I don't need to test out everybody because the the differences are going to be massive. Uh, for, the, the, for me to test this the way that I would want to I would need much faster tools. <laughs> uh, yeah, so at base, my combat with no gear on. And uh, I was using Dragon for all my testing. So, like, very consistent timer, very consistent target, blah, blah, blah. Uh, combat while attacking the Dragon was ulting at 62 seconds. Now, with all my Rage Regen gear on him... Did I not just record my total? I did, 50. Uh, with all my Rage Rege Regen gear on him, which is 111% in total, it decreased the time from 62 seconds to 50 seconds. So what exactly does this mean? Right now in the community, the, the general thing that I keep hearing from other players is that there's a soft cap on Rage Regen. So what we mean by a soft cap or a hard cap. Uh, crit Rate has a hard cap, right? As you hit 100%, it doesn't matter if you have 100% or 3,222%. You're going to get the same result, right? It is either a yes or a no. So it is a hard cap. It means that once you hit a certain number, any more additional does not matter, does not affect what you're doing. So that is a hard cap. A soft cap is things like, uh, you know, like your crit damage, or in this case, rage regen, where... As you get more and more and more of it, you do see a diminishing return on it to the point where having like the difference between 100% and having 3000% will feel so negligible, right? It'll be like, oh, I mean, yes, it helps to have 3000 rather than 100. But if your difference is like, let's say 0.1 second before you get your ultimate, that's not going to feel good. That's not going to be like, oh... I definitely want to spend the resources to get 
3,000% rate, not that 3,000 possible. I'm being over dramatic to kind of prove a point here. With that being said, um, you shall all vanish. when it comes to rage regen, I thought that the rage regen, let's go back to combat here for a moment. God I thought that the well. rage regen percentage was going to affect this auto rage regen because that made sense to me, right? This percentage off of 14 would make sense, right? So if you had like 50%, I would get seven rage regen. If I had 100%, I would get 14. If I had like 100 and uh, 14 is not very well divisible by anything. Uh, if I had 100% and some change, it might be like 14.3 rage regen, right? That made terrific amounts of sense to me. However, upon this video testing, that uh, me recording so many attempts with Narvi, I can't explain how many attempts, it was like 18 attempts with just Narvi, putting her into gear uh, at different percentages, the percentages did not really affect the timing of her ult. What drastically affected the timing of her ult was when she was attacking Dragon versus when she was not attacking Dragon. And the Rage Regen does show increasing numbers consistently uh, when she was attacking Dragon. And the numbers of when she was not attacking Dragon are almost all the same. And I would I would say come up to human error in the, the variation, the fluctuation. So how did I test this out? How, how am I coming to the conclusions in this video, right? What I was doing is consistently, I was going into easy dragon. That way dragon would have no chance of killing me or my fighters. And I would take Narvi with zero gear on, right? Absolutely zero gear. And I would face her away. Then, because she starts off with rage, that's not part of the test, right? I don't care about her having rage. So I'd cast her ultimate. And then when her ultimate got down to zero, right? This zero percent again. 423 is my timer. Using the in-game timer and only the in-game timer because I can fluctuate the time. I then waited for her to get back up to 100%. So we started off at four minutes and 23 seconds. And this is gonna be, I, I actually don't remember because I, I have her in rage rege regen gear right now. So now she gets it at 342, right? So that is my baseline of that's about 40 seconds to 41 seconds. So that is how I determine, okay, what is her base regen like? That 14, uh, actually she's a 12, she's a 12. Uh, she regenerates 12 at a time, right? So then I did the exact opposite. What about if she is attacking the dragon? Um, here I'm gonna summon combat out, which does not affect her rage regen. But remember that on the first attempt, we had a timer of 424 when we started the testing. Well, now that she's attacking the dragon, that 424 is now bumped up to 431, right? And then here she's attacking the dragon as she goes back down to zero. So she's gaining about two and a half, three percent per swing that uh, connects, which means that your attack speed and your on hit drastically affects how your rage regen will operate. But as we can see here, she's now massively climbing. Now with her having, she has 111% rage regen on right now. And we went from four actually can't even remember i'm i'm feeling sick um i think it was 435 down to uh about 412 right so it's about a 23 seconds uh difference with her attacking the dragon so i did this with her having zero gear on i had her facing away 
then facing to the dragon and attacking it. Then I did it with her with gear on and got a whole bunch of numbers that we'll review here in a second. Uh, I'm not trying to delay intentionally. It's just that the numbers are actually very unimpressive. So I, I, there's no need to get to them quickly. Um, but that that is how I determined how Rage Regen affects a champion like Narvi. Then I was able to test out something very similar with Dolores, right? I wanted to see if healers. So I originally had Dolores... over here by herself, touching nobody, right? Because I wanted to see if Dolores healing nothing has a different effect. Her healing nothing versus her healing, you know, everybody... Um, I'm doing a terrible job of displaying this. Or her healing everybody around her and if that made any difference. It did not. It had zero effect on, on her rage or gen specifically. Then, more importantly, every single time I tested with a different piece of equipment. So I, I did as little as 3% Rage Regen, 10%, 20%, 66%, and then a grand total of 111%. And Dolores showed very, very little, if not any improvement. Uh, where are my Dolores numbers? So Dolores at base, I have her hitting her ultimate in 45 seconds. And then with 111 Rage Regen on, I got her down to 42 seconds. So an increase of three seconds. Now those three seconds may matter to you. They might matter even more in something like the uh, arena. Something I 100% didn't check now that I think about it. Dolores has this gimmick where she can gain 30% of her rage after her ultimate, and that kept proccing. So I had to do like 10 attempts of her to get her to get zero, and then had to do another 10 attempts of her to get zero when surrounded by people. And this has been a very frustrating thing for me to uh, try to check. So I hope you guys appreciate this or get to learn something very fun about this. Um... But yes, so that is how I tested for her. Now, Comet is kind of the most complicated one because he was the most recent one I checked. With Comet specifically, I did not test him out facing away from Dragon. Now, the reason behind this is, here if I face him away from Dragon, he starts off with 50% rage, which is something I don't want to test him in. The problem that we have with Comet, though, he is a champion that cannot activate his ultimate unless an enemy is in sight. So using him as a test sample, which is very important to me for reasons I'll get into in a second in this video, I cannot test him from zero to a hundred without his ability to attack something. Now, like I said, if I attack something, I can see the, the, the chunks up that he gains every time he attacks. So this means that Rage Regen seems to be this on hit effect so hypothetically if when comet hits something and let's say he gains back three percent of his rage when i fully equipped him in the uh full rage or gen gear that should increase him from a three percent on hit effect to a six percent on hit effect right so more or less that is kind of what happened uh I say kind of, so again, his base ultimate was 62 seconds. And then uh, with the full Rage Regen gear on, no other gear. So like I don't have a like, damage stats because I hope to everything holy. Damage does not affect. I don't know if crit rates affect rage. And that's something like I would have to test him out in 100% uh, crit rate gear with no Rage Regen gear on. Like you see how things get really complicated really fast. I'd also have to test him out in 100% crit rate with no attack speed because I don't want the attack speed influencing my numbers. Th things get messy very, very, very quickly in this study because originally I was assuming that his rage regen would be based off of his 14 rage regen, not off of his attacking and gaining back rage. So yeah, yeah, th th things in this video got uh, pretty messy 
really fast for me. Marantino, welcome back, brother. How you doing? So, that is how we tested out this Rage Regen concept. Or at least that is how it makes sense for me to test this out. So, I'm going to go back to re-equipping champions. And I want to say that what I'm actively gearing my champions up with has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about. So, I'm sorry that the, uh, the visual content here probably makes absolutely no sense in in contrast with what we are uh doing but unfortunately it is uh it's how we're gonna roll this video <laughs> so uh one of the i deselected the wrong stat one of the main things that came up in this testing there were certain consistencies that were very fascinating to come across. So when it comes to fighters, on average, they have either a 12 or 13 roll for their auto rage regen, right? Uh, healers have on average 15 with a couple of exceptions going up to like 19 or 18 and then one exception going down to 14. But that, that wasn't like a, a super like, oh my gosh, that's going to change everything. Uh, 18 is Dolores. Uh, so very fascinating there. Um, the other very, very fascinating thing for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, piercers and mages have around 14 on average. Uh, pretty consistently. Almost all of them have this. I will be talking about weird exception champions that uh might change certain thoughts you have about them uh and then lastly uh defenders all of them have 14 all epic and so i'm sorry for this video i was primarily looking at our epic and uh legendary champions i would i did not want to go through all the rares or all the elites uh, that amount of testing would have probably driven me bonkers at this point. Uh, but yeah. So. That was fascinating to find out, right? That your healers have the most base rate rage regen. Like the, the most auto rage regen. And then a lot of our attackers. Uh, so fighters, which typically... Our, our fighters and our defenders having 12 to 13, like 12 to 14, anywhere in there. But they're going to be the most inconsistent because if our rage regen is an on hit effect that they get more rage, that means your champions like Wrath, who we tend to put in a lane and leave them be to guard the lane indefinitely, right? Wrath can handle a lane by himself. He does not need a whole lot of support. It means that he's going to be going in and out of his ultimate constantly, and it's going to make sense to us. But a champion like uh, like Baron, let's say. Baron, yes, we might put him in a lane, but we probably have damage dealers around him. We might even have slow effects so that things don't reach our Baron as quickly. With that being said, Baron's going to have a hard time going in and out of his same ultimate. And what's fascinating is that champions like Wrath... And Baron, uh, Wrath here has a, now, because I have him skilled up, has a 300 rage ult, which is extremely quick. I ascend from the and then Baron has a 400. So very, very similar ult times. However, whoever is attacking more frequently is going to go in and out of their ult faster. So not only is Wrath a 300 ult, so he's going to feel faster from that, but typically, we also build Wrath with attack speed, which means Baron, effectively, not having attack speed, is going to get to his ult slower, not only because it costs more, but because he's also not attacking as frequently to find out. So, very, very fascinating uh, information to uh, stumble across in this. Keep calm. So, with this being said, what did I figure out that I think is the most useful information about Rage Regen? 
So number one, for me, it was it did not work the way I thought it did. I 100% thought that it went off of this Rage Regen Auto being 12. So if your champion's just standing around, they're gaining 12 Rage per second. And that made perfect sense to me that Rage Regen percentage would most likely affect that number. Now that I know it doesn't, now we have the discrepancy of, well, does a healer gain more rage as they are healing a target that has missing health? Or is it just every time they take emotion, they would gain more rage regen? So champions like Dolores, it'll make her ultimate feel very consistent because she's always healing no matter what. But champions like Lightlock, who only can heal when a target is missing HP, won't always be healing unless you're fighting something like Dragon, where, cool, Dragon's constantly hitting something. So, very, very uh, discrepant concepts here, uh, which is super fascinating. I, I absolutely love it. It has made learning about Rage Regen... It's one of those things where, cool, it's answering some questions, but then it's raising like 50 other ones, right? Uh, so I, I find that hilarious and frustrating all at once. So, now that we have a base understanding of how Rage Regen seems to work, as far as I understand it, and we now have a good idea of what majority of the champions have as a base Rage Regen, who benefits the most from Rage Regen? So ideally it's our attackers, right? Anybody who is consistently able to do damage. So ironically enough, I would almost argue that your piercers, because a lot of piercers have a longer range than most champions. So I feel like they, like the piercers, as well as the piercers, because they tend to have a faster attack stat with me. than majority of champions. Their attack speed is usually closer to 2.0. Usually, obviously there's some exceptions. But them having a faster attack speed and then we typically build them with more attack speed. So all in all, we're, we're, we're having kind of this like overly stacking effect of y yes, right? Like all of our uh, all of our piercers with their longer range, meaning they can get into combat much faster. Uh, they're attacking faster. So every time they hit, they're gaining back rage. And then lastly, uh, because of their damage type, right? There's not a tons of levels with like flying enemies. There, there are some, but a lot of the heavy, heavily armored enemies, that means they're gonna be hitting those enemies much more frequently, building up that rage. A lot of our mages kind of have these big bursty spells or big bursts of damage as well as they're attacking slower. So because of the damage types uh, and like how we build them, yes, we're starting to build mages with more attack speed, but uh, yeah, yeah, very, very, very fascinating. Uh, so I would argue that your piercers and your mages will take the most effect of... That doesn't make sense. Yes, it does. Uh, t -t 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 Sadie. But then champions like healers, who I thought were going to massively benefit from Rage Regen. And again, my understanding would be if our Rage Regen is 18, right? When Dolores is standing around not doing anything, if she has a 111% increase, I thought that was going to really help her out because as she's standing around doing nothing she would be still gaining back rage reliably well now according to my own information that is not the case it's the rage regen is definitely not best on a champion that's not attacking it's literally the exact opposite it is best on champions that are constantly attacking so our mages and our piercers are going to benefit the most from it uh fighters and defenders obviously can benefit from it just it's going to be a little bit different for them uh, because they're going to have up and down times, right? Like if your mage 
if you're playing with Comet and Wrath attacking the same lane, there's going to be plenty of times where Comet is just nuking everything down before anything gets anywhere close to Wrath. So Wrath's not going to be able to hit anything. All right, I think I finally re-geared everybody. Uh, did I move any other gear around? All right, good. Dagna should have nothing on her. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so with this being said, let's talk over some really interesting facts, and then I can show you the number testing, and it's going to be very, very unimpressive. Um... So, very, very fascinating facts that I found out about Rage Regen when researching this video, right? Uh, so, number one, when it comes to our fighters specifically, uh, again, to reiterate, their base regen is around uh, 12 to 13. Uh, why this is important is we kind of have three categories of ultimates. So, a lot of ultimates fall into either a very fast or recurring ultimate a you should get this ultimate very frequently and then your final this ultimate is kind of a game changer ult so it is not something that you get to spam and it's going to feel like it takes you a long time to get to it so on average right our fastest ult in the game is at light lock at 120 so he needs a total of 120 rage from him to ult and his base regen is 15 so even if lightlock isn't healing somebody you know every second he's going to gain 15 so in about 10 seconds he's going to have his ultimate every single time whether or not he's healing so if he's healing on top of it yes he'll probably get to his ult faster uh other very fast champions are champions like a lucas uh which is very fascinating so this is the one champion I will argue, I think it probably takes the best effect of Rage Regen in the entire game. Him having one of the fastest attack speeds, a base regen of 14, and then his ultimate, when fully skilled up, goes down to 200. So even though he doesn't have the fastest ultimate in the game, the fact that he is attacking as one of the fastest of champions in the game, I haven't seen anybody below a 2.0 attack speed but then on top of that his base regen is for uh, is 14 so he's going to get to his ultimate yes it's more than 10 seconds but if every time he attacks you know he's building up rage he he's going to get to it very fast and then what's kind of cool about our lucas is that because his ultimate is on auto cast he's going to just be constantly spamming it out so Rage Regen and Attack Speed absolutely go hand in hand. So champions like Cuke, that's why everybody kind of says build them, you know, pure Attack Speed and Rage Regen. And, you know, you just rely on their ultimate. It turns out that your Rage Regen focuses on your on hit and so does Attack Speed. So there we go. Very fascinating. Now know the, uh, the math behind it. Uh, so going further... Uh, the way that I'm mentally categorizing things, if they have a rage cost of like 300 or lower, we're going to call that a fast ultimate going forward, right? It is a very, very quick, very easy to obtain ultimate. It also means that they can spam it. So there's a lot of champions. So like um, Edril. Edril has a combination effect with other champions whenever they use their ultimates. And then there's also champions like Laurel who can buff champions whenever they use their ultimate. So if you're using Edril and Laurel to do a whole bunch of extra damage, you would want to use champions like your uh, Alucas, Screef, Lightlock, Wrath. Uh, th th there is a whole bunch, but it's very interesting. So if you ever look at a champion, you're like, hey, is Ein any good? I mean, good is very conjecture, but him having an ult closer to a thousand is obviously very far from 300. Cool. I know that he's going to have more of like a game changing ult and a Lucas is just kind of like an AOE slow. So it, it, it does make sense. 
are mid-range ults. Uh, mid-range ults, I would say, are somewhere between 500 and I would even say go as high as 900. Uh, 900 is a very cusp line. So 900 might be better for like the long ults. So maybe we say like 500 to 800 is a good mid-range ult, meaning you're basically going to have your ult no matter what, once a minute. Once a minute guaranteed, very, very weird extenuating cir circumstances would you not get it. So champions like Krake uh, get their ultimate down to about 600. Cyrene here gets her ultimate, which is a cost regen. Uh, they get theirs around 660 when all skills are invested in. Narvi, who is who I typically recommend and highly praise on this channel, uh, her ultimate goes down to 500. Uh, so it feels very, very good. It means you're just going to be constantly casting it. So anywhere from 500 to 800, understand you're going to be like, cool, I'm going to get this ultimate. I'm going to get to play with it a lot. You can also kind of spam it. You don't necessarily need to hold it and sit on it. it it's one of those things you can just kind of activate it and you'll know hey, I should get it back very quickly, fairly quickly. I will say though, this is also falls into the category of be careful that you're ulting at the right time. Yes, you can spam it, but make sure that like, let's say on Dragon, if you're counting on your Aracha's ultimate, uh, so here it's base 1000, but we get minus 200. So it falls into that 800 category meaning it feels like you constantly have it available to you. But if you ult, let's say, right after Dragon breathes his fire, what, or, you know, like when he would breathe fire, fire, so when you break his shield, I guess. Uh, if you ult right away, there is a chance you could build that back up right before his next breath attack. So you're kind of ultimately ulting twice. With that being said, though, you are probably not going to be able to ult before he, like, as he's breathing in and gets that shield, break his shield, get your ultimate back, and then be able to cast it right away. You're going to get it when he starts doing his basic four attacks, and then you're going to be very time constrained to be like, ooh, am I going to get Arach's ultimate back up right before the next breath attack? So for that reason, the, this five to 800 ult, I will say kind of has also the most skill expression in this game, meaning it'll be really up to the player to dictate how often they ult, when they ult, when the timings make sense. And that also means that, especially on things like Dragon or certain boss levels, knowing this information of 500 to 800 lets you kind of spam your ultimates might make players more efficient, right? That, cool, I can spam this ultimate and I'll feel good. So the last category is our 900 plus club, right? And this is where things do, like you'll definitely feel it on all of these champions. So anybody who plays with these champions, you know that Deimos, right? He starts off with zero rage. So when you summon him out or Komodo, both of them get their ultimates down close to around 900. I forget what Komodo's is off the top of my head, but it feels like it takes forever to get to Deimos's ultimate. And when you cast it, it lasts for 20 seconds, which then means that for 20 seconds, you feel amazing. But that means when you go to your next ultimate, it takes you that much longer. It almost takes you an additional 20 seconds to get to it. Because while you have your ultimate available to you, you can no longer be gaining up your next ultimate. When you use your ultimate and you're in active duty of your ultimate. So for his, being a giant werewolf for 20 seconds, that's 20 seconds you cannot be rage regening at all. So these ultimates tend to feel really, really amazing, but also makes them kind of difficult to time out properly. This also means you might need to ult five seconds early to keep your 900 plus club in line with your like five to 800 club of te like, you know, team members, right? So for players trying to use Dolores' ult on Dragon and you want to make sure everybody kind of syncs up, you will notice, I have noticed this, that with champions like Comet, uh, it feels kind of terrible. It feels like Comet is always lagging behind. 
Well, the part of the reasons of that, so his base ult's at 1300. It's one of the longest to reach ultimates in the game. Then on top of that, you have 15 seconds here, scaling up to 20 seconds. Okay, I was about to say, I don't remember him having any other... I thought his ultimate ranged up to 25. But him being in that 20 second ultimate, along with Deimos, means that they're going to be behind getting their, to their next ultimate uh, compared to the rest of your team. So, with that being said, though, who in the game has the longest ultimate to reach? It's our boy Nazim. Uh, this was very shocking that he starts off at 1400. And it can scale down to 1,200, which still keeps it very, very high. Now, for the record, I, I would kind of argue he doesn't have the longest ultimate. I would argue legendaries, uh, the legendaries that have like 1,300, like Comet, they will have the longest because I think it is easier to come by epic skill dust and crystals for you to reduce Nazim's ultimate. But I have done a review on Nazim. And in my review, this was not a point that I was paying attention to. Nazim has a kit that works against him. Like, just everything about his kit. He has some of the lowest damage, especially for a mage, being 50%. And it doesn't strike multiple times, which is really, really strange. Then his ultimate takes one of the longest amounts to get to it. I'm guessing that they did some player testing and Nazim was like super broken and they over nerfed him. Like they, they took everybody's feedback into consideration. We're like, oh, okay, his ult comes up too fast. We'll increase the time on it. Oh, his uh, damage is too high. Okay, we'll nerf his damage. And they kind of just threw the whole, the whole kitchen sink at him, as it were, and uh, obliterated his usefulness. Um, the champion that has the highest base regen in the game. I was not expecting this. It's the mage. Sulkadens. Sulkadens. Whatever his name is. But he's got a base regen, regen of 19. Uh, very, very fast regen. Um, and then his ultimate is just kind of like on par. It goes down to about uh, 500. So he will feel like he is constantly being able to ult and this is something i would argue is very important to note that his ult is super spammable which means that if i was to review him i am now going to be paying a lot more attention to things like that in my future reviews which admittedly i'm kind of running into a brick wall with because i'm running out of the champions to actually test them and be like okay does this make sense but now knowing that the the ultimates fall into kind of a different category and i've always paid attention to the number being like oh 600 okay got it oh uh comet is 1200 got it so comet's gonna be able to ult a lot less than sulkadens i i get it no i didn't get it because also you know comet is at 14 sulkadens is at 19 so sulkadens has a 50 percent base rage regen over comet uh, if their attack speeds are different, that's going to give players a huge advantage. So things like Harpen. Uh, Harpen had like a 300, I think, ultimate. And then he's got one of the fastest attack speeds in the game at like 2.0. So 2.0. Oh yeah, Harpen. Harpen has the slowest rage regen in the entire game at 4. Yes, that, that does say 4. Now, there is a chance with Harpen specifically, it actually is 14, and the UI here is wrong that it's supposed to be 14 because all of our other piercers are at 14 with like one or two exceptions to them. Uh, but yeah, Harpen for some reason has four. Silas has 13, so they kind of nerf Silas. Or again, somebody messed up with some of the stats and he's he's got a base of 14 but that was something very interesting for piercers uh a lot of the fighters like i said earlier have 12 to 13 the exceptions to them are kind of all the best rated ones so zilla 2 arrogance uh aracha 
they all have uh, 14 instead of the 12 or 13. But admittedly, this was all over the place. Like, it do does not seem to be their weapon, does not seem to affect anything. Uh, Aatrox has uh, 15 out of all the fighters. So, very, very interesting to be like, oh, that was not what I was expecting to see. Um, and then Cerberus, who's the big brother to Aatrox, has 13. So very, very fascinating how even like some of the epics still are going to have an advantage over certain things like Cerberus and whatnot. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be very boring and end on the stats here. Ready? Bam. So, originally, column one here was the champions I was going to test out. I was going to test out Narvi as my base, and then I was going to use champions like Lightlock, Alucas, and Wrath to see if they would be significantly faster. And, unfortunately, my Narvi testing here doubled up, right? Because I had to test out her time to get to her ultimate. And then I realized that when she attacked, she was gaining more rage. So I had to alter how I tested this because going from 42 to 28 seconds is a massive, massive difference. And then when I fully equipped her with the 111% rage regen, her base time went down to 40 which wasn't really like a, a huge deal, right? From like 42. So I could even argue that's either human error or uh, maybe on average it was like 41 seconds and then the timing of me paying attention to it and, and her swinging her weapon, blah, 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 is roughly the same. But the, uh, the big difference was as she was attacking, it did go down to 21 from 28 seconds and i would say that is a noticeable difference that absolutely makes me feel like okay the but this percentage does matter because here at 10 percent while attacking the dragon still maintained at 28 seconds so no real discernible difference here but once we get up to 20 sec uh 20 percent we did shave off two seconds which i would argue 20% rage feels very good. Um, as we get up to 66, we were able to shave off five seconds. So for me, around 60% probably feels good for rage regen on your attacking classes. And then at the 111%, we were able to shave off a total of seven seconds. So I do think there are diminishing returns. I would say, though, I don't really see them until after 66%. Uh, and even then, I would still argue the more rage regen you have, it, it is making a difference. It's letting you get to your ult faster. And as we approach that 10 second mark, and I was using Narvi again, I, I really want to stress the, the the hard numbers of this video are coming from Narvi of all champions. Uh, she does not have the... Oh, she actually does have a very fast attack speed. She has a 2.1, which is a lot better. I thought she had a 2.6. Uh, yes, th that is also going to drastically, you know, mentally change how people think about this. So to get the most out of your Rage Regen, the way that I play with Narvi is I tend to put her off in a corner, not near anything, not attacking anything. And ironically enough, that is literally the wrong way to play with her especially with the way that I have her geared up. So it's one of those things like, oh, cool. She's getting an extra 3% whenever she is forced into combat. But the reality is I, I do want her in combat. I would want her up front poking the bears or being in a range where she can attack something from the side. So maybe her life isn't threatened, but she is attacking and building up rage. Uh, but very, very fascinating info for sure. Um, anything else of note? Not really. So again, my comet at 1200, uh, with no gear on, he was taking about 62 seconds to get into his ultimate. Uh, so the math of it, 
that I had earlier here. So if we do 1200, because that is uh, what my comet has in terms of total rage, and we divide it by 14, so his base, if comet wasn't attacking anything, would take you about 85 seconds to get into an ultimate. So him obviously attacking, and if he's gaining, let's say about three rage per hit, um, that would probably shave you down from your 85 seconds to 62. So that makes sense. With the rage regen gear on, I did get his ultimate from 62 seconds down to 50. And this does matter a whole lot because as we were discussing earlier, if we're trying to sync him up with Dolores of all champions, who her base time was 45 seconds to get back into her ultimate from 0% and half the time uh, because of her kit's design, she's actually getting more rage regen after she ults. She has a, a concept where uh, she just can gain like 300 uh, rage or 30% of her rage back after she ults. Uh, well, yeah, which would be 300. With that being said, Dolores' time is going to fluctuate all over the place. But if you're trying to get your Comet, me, to sync up with my Dolores, it's going to be very hard because she has a like a 30%, you know, decrease on time uh, compared, I guess it's 25% uh, compared to uh, Comet base. And then if any of her skills proc to give her more rage faster, Comet is going to be put at a disadvantage. Uh, something I didn't test in this video that just came to mind. What if Comet attacks and hits multiple targets? Does he gain more rage regen? So champions like Osiren, if they're hitting three enemies at the same time, and let's say he gets three rage every enemy hit, is he gaining a total of nine rage regen then? Which would mean that your AoE champions could potentially skyrocket up using rage regen. Very interesting concept that I'll have to look into later. Uh, I will admit I'm a little burnt out on all this concept at the moment. This is a lot of just staring at numbers and being like, oh, this does not feel terrific. <coughs> I had Titus on here because I wanted to see how tanks would operate. <coughs> because logically, they should be gaining rage, rage as they are attacked. And Titus specifically is a very, very low rated champion in this game. His cost being 31 scares a lot of players away from ever using him. And then he's supposed to be a tank, but he's got an enormous attack stat. So my concept for him has been, you could build him as a bruiser, right? You could build him with like things like HP percentage and defense percentage as substats, but still build him for a lot of attack by giving him things like attack bonus, crit rate, and crit damage so that he's still outputting damage, but he's also still a defender at the same time. And he would literally have plenty of uh, base bulk stats to work with. And he's got a good attack stat, so he'll feel good doing damage. And what's really cool about Titus, you could really customize him. So if you're like, I don't really need him as a big damage dealer, you just build him 100% HP defensive stats, and he'll feel wildly super tanky and his ultimate does give him hp back per second based upon his max hp so building him super tanky would feel amazing likewise for the fighter version if you decided hey i like titus as a damage dealer i like him shooting eye lasers at things in front of him and setting them on fire that's when he's fully awakened uh you could build him as a damage dealer and he would have plenty of the bulk stats to be like, cool, he's not going to pop instantly, but he'll output some good damage, kind of like Wrath. Um, and then the vice versa is true. If you build him a fully defensive, he does have a high base attack, meaning when he does have to attack, he is going to be putting out respectable numbers, even built fully as a tank. But obviously you would still want things like crit rate and crit damage on him. Uh, I ultimately ended up not testing him because again, him being the cost of 31, it's going to make it so difficult to reliably test him. Like I can test him out in Dragon, right? But that that doesn't show off Titus in like any other content ever. The, the amount of content where you can reliably summon Titus out in the first five seconds of a level 
are incredibly thin. And even then, I would argue you're not going to want Titus out first. You could almost play with two other tanks rather than Titus and summon two tanks and block off two lanes or a tank and a healer rather than just getting Titus. And for the record, Titus is kind of everything. He's a tank. He's a self-healer. He's a self-reviver. He can do damage. He can do it all. So his 31 price tag, I would argue, is justified because he can do anything and everything. I would say that he's kind of the ultimate flex champion. The only thing that would make Titus better or like would make that price tag make tons of sense. When Titus goes into his ultimate, he gains an extra block of coverage. So he's a defender, right? He only has one block in front of him that he can attack. If his eye laser would just like shoot in a straight line through either like the whole map, like, you know, whatever direction he's facing, his eye laser would just go and hit everything. That kind of thing. If you made him a ranged champion as well, not just two blocks in front of him. Um, but again, the damage is very respectable. When he goes into his ultimate, uh, he it looks cool. He like plants his shields down into the ground and he uses eye laser to blow things up in front of him. And it, it's noticeable damage. It is noticeable when you either give him damage or um, I guess I should just have Titus up on screen while I'm talking about him so much. Uh, but yeah, Titus is somebody where I, I would love to think that Ragergen is probably going to be amazing on him. But again, as a defender, it, it's, it's one of those things. Things are going to come up and start whacking you. You're going to be whacking them back. You're going to have tons of rage for that reason. And now that I understand how Rage Regen wor works, I would almost argue that all the tank stats are better than Rage Regen currently. Uh, hopefully the game can fine tune how Rage Regen works, or maybe we as the players haven't deciphered the most effective use of Rage Regen, right? Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end the video on that note is... If you play with Rage Regen, let me know where you feel like is the most noticeable. So I would say at minimum, you're going to want around 20 Rage Regen on a champion that is attacking specifically. So your your piercers and your mages, I think, are going to make the take the most benefit of Rage Regen. If tanks do regen rage like as they get hit. I could argue very easily then that Rage Regen is a very useful stat for them. Man, Titus, you look so cool. I'm not really super into mechs, but specifically, Titus has this kind of like clockwork mech that makes sense. And I love the dual shields. I, I think he looks awesome. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I know that this was a long one, but this was... Uh, a very fun, like, deep dive, if you will. A good scrutinize the stat on Rage Regen. Uh, I am off from work this week. I only have to go in on Wednesday. Uh, I get paid for Thanksgiving and Black Friday here in the States. So I'm going to be streaming a lot this week. So hopefully you guys want to come and hang out. If you do. So guys, if you love this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, I put a tremendous amount of time uh, tonight into it and just staring at numbers tracking numbers, comparing numbers, and then being like, oh crap, this doesn't work the way I thought it did. Um, it took a lot of energy. So if you guys could at least hit the like button, even if you didn't really like uh, this video, but if you're watching at this point, you clearly wanted to hear what I had to say. So go ahead and take five seconds out of your life. Hit the like button for me. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you want to see me stream this week. Uh, I do a lot of Watchers of Realm in the morning, and then I do, right now I'm playing through Lies of P in the evenings. Um, if that sounds like your cup of tea or you want to just come hang out with me or ask me questions about any of these games, uh, it is twitch.tv backslash sprinklebeard and I am very friendly. Uh, one of the biggest things about Twitch that makes it a lot of fun is the interaction. Uh, you guys on YouTube have been leaving me tons of comments and I absolutely love kind of like chatting back and forth or you guys say some things that I then have to consider for videos, which I really appreciate. Uh, it really helps the brain, you know, tick and think about things in a different way. So, uh, thank you for those of you guys who go out of your way to comment. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, this is a lot of good info today. I'm really... I'm really, really happy because I 100... So the way that I have my Narvi geared up, I 100% thought... Felt like she was getting to her ultimate much, much faster from me gearing her up in full Rage Regen. And now that I know that that's not true at all, uh, it absolutely changes the stats I want to throw on her. Right? Now I absolutely just want to throw, you know, HP percentage, defensive percentage gear on her. And then I would argue attack speed now is an amazingly massive stat. Because of every time you're hitting an enemy, every time you're attacking, you're gaining rage. I would absolutely argue uh, attack speed just like quadrupled in value for me. Like not only are you doing more damage, not only you have a, like more chances to crit from, you know, attack speed, but now you're also gaining rage on top of it. I could very now more argue that attack speed is a much more valuable stat it's not just one of those things like, oh, it's a good stat. Oh, it's helpful that you're attacking more frequently. Like, no, now it's like the broken stat in the game. You know, just as valuable as your attack stat. Potentially more, because if you're attacking faster, you know, you're, you're getting to your ultimate faster, which means you technically would start dealing more damage, uh, more consistent damage, because you'd be constantly going into your ultimate faster, uh, that could definitely change how we gear up champions, right? Because that means attack speed amulets uh, could very, very well be like super, super amazing, right? Maybe we now want to play with attack percentage gear, attack percentage gear and uh, attack speed amulets. That could be why my greed does not feel amazing. Shit. Cool. Good to know. Good to know. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. And until that next time, ta-ta.